God most high, it's you we seek. And shine your light for all to see. Oh God, it's you we need. Give us your mercy and give us your Welcome to Monday Thursday Worship, friends. My name's Jim Don, and I'm the pastor at Livingston Church, and I welcome you in the name of our risen Savior, Jesus, who wants us to live and like he did. And uh, that video was really powerful. It's the first time I've seen it. And uh, we have a lot to, uh, to live up to into the person of Christ. Hey, before we uh, begin that with a call to worship, it's printed in your bulletin, or which is contained in the uh, um, in your app. I want to um, share a couple things with you that uh, we do have communion um, following the service. So I invite you to to grab your your little self-contained uh, communion cup with the bread and uh, and the juice, and uh, following the the worship service, we will partake of the Lord's Supper around the table. And now if you want to join with me in the call to worship, it's on page three in your bulletin. And Jesus answered them, saying, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Father, glorify your name. And there came, therefore, a voice out of heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The multitude, therefore, who stood by and heard it were saying that it thundered. Others were saying, an angel has spoken to him. And Jesus said, this voice was not for my sake, but for your sake. Now judgment is upon the world. Now the ruler of this world will be cast out. And I, if I be lifted up from earth, will draw all men to myself. But he was saying this to indicate the kind of death which he was about to die. And the people responded, And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. And fixing our eyes upon Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy before him endured the cross, despising its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the Father. And all said, but may it never be said that I should boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. Amen. And as we prepare our hearts this morning or this evening for this Monday Thursday service, I do invite you to uh, reflect on this medley of the cross as we sing.
friends, I invite you to join me as we go before the Lord in prayer. And I know a number of you uh, have prayer requests, and, and so at this time we can lift them up and know that uh, God is hearing us. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Oh Lord, we thank you for this sacred night in which Jesus had time together with his disciples as they were preparing to enjoy the Seder meal. And Lord, you transformed that upper room meal into something special. But as the meal was being prepared and about to be served, there were signs of betrayal and pain and darkness was evident. It was as evident as the kiss from Judas. And so, Lord, this evening, we just ask that you would come into our lives as you offered yourself to the disciples on that evening over 2,000 years ago. And before you celebrated that Passover meal, you put a servant's towel around your waist. You filled a pitcher and a basin. You filled the basin with water. And you demonstrated to us what love is all about. You showed the true meaning of agape love, God's love, by washing the feet of your disciples. That is amazing love, Lord God, that you, the light of the world, would get your hands dirty by washing feet. And so this evening, Lord, we offer our souls, our hearts, and our minds to you and we ask that you would wash us clean by your love and by the power, Lord, of your Holy Spirit. And so as we continue to move forward, reenacting the drama that took place in that upper room, help us, Lord God, to claim that truth so that we might show your love to others without reservation. And it's in your name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. When did we forget how to love? Did it happen suddenly? Or was it a gradual decline? When did we forget the very foundation of the gospel? For God so loved. Love is what moved God to action. Love is what held Jesus to the cross. Love is what rolled away the stone. But we, we've forgotten that part. Without love, we are simply a resounding gong, a clanging cymbal, a bunch of noise. Without love, we are nothing. Is that what people see in us? Meaningless? empty noise love is supposed to be patient and kind gentle not angry or arrogant yet in our effort to stand on truth we have forgotten the very thing these truths are based on love never once 
did Jesus fail in this? Not in his heartbreak or his anger. Not in his joy or his betrayal. His default has always been love. Maybe it's time the church was more like Jesus. And now I invite you to turn your hearts and minds to the reading of the scripture by Scott Hayfor. Jesus washes his disciples' feet. It was just before the Passover festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The evening meal was in progress, and the devil had already prompted Judas, the son of Simon Iscariot, to betray Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, You do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then Lord, Simon replied, Not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus answered, Those who have had a bath need only wash their feet. Their whole body is clean, and you are clean, though not every one of you. For he knew who was going to betray him, and that is why he said not everyone was clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and returned to his place. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightfully so, for that is what I am. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. Very truly, I tell you, no servant is greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who has sent him. Now that you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. Jesus concluded the Last Supper by saying this to the disciples, A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so must you love one another. By this everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thanks, Scott, for reading this scripture this this evening. If the disciples had any illusions of political and spiritual greatness, the sight of a stripped-down Jesus throws water on all of their aspirations. If the power of miraculous healing had gone to their heads, the power of Jesus' love at their feet teaches them a different lesson. The one that they had followed for three years over land and water and desert and mountains, through the crowds and in solitude, is now washing their feet as their journey comes to an end. Instead, my friends, The disciples ask, why not wash our hands? Why not wash our feet? Why stop there? Why not wash people from all illnesses? Why not wash the world of all racism, of all greed, of homophobia? Why not build a basin with an eternal fountain. Just imagine the Bellagio Hotel in Las Vegas, that beautiful fountain where all could go in and be washed clean. 
of whatever it is that ails them. Oh, I have wished so many times that I had a magic wand and I had the power of faith to solve everything. That I had the power just to say, Shazam, in Jesus' name, be healed. Everything then would instantaneously be clean. I'd love that. Instead, friends, you know what I've learned and I want you to take away tonight? It's this, that Jesus pours just enough water into a clay basin to wash one pair of feet, then another pair of feet, then another. He commands his disciples, he commands us to do no more and no less than this, to wash one pair of feet at a time. Just one. One at a time. So how can you do that? You can do it this way, friend. Love the person who is in front of you. Every time they're in front of you, love them. Then love the next person in front of you. Just love them. And the next person. Break bread with the person on your left. And break bread with the person on your right. As Jesus tells us, we are to love one another. He doesn't say fix one another. He doesn't say wash the world from head to toe. He says love one another like I have loved you. That's what we're called to do, friends. Simply to love one another like Jesus loves you. Let's pray. Oh, Jesus, your power stretches out in love. But so often we stretch ourselves out for the love of power. We want you to fix all things from the beginning but you call us to love until the very end. Oh, fill our basins, Lord, and we will do as you have shown us to love one another. Amen. I invite you to turn your, your hearts and mind to the reading of the scriptures by playing Cold Iron. Matthew chapter 26, verses 26 through 29. While they were eating the Last Supper, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink this fruit of the vine from now until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thanks, Blaine, for reading this story where Jesus offers us his body and his blood. So I invite you to pick up the cup with the, the juice and the bread, and, and let's just reenact what happened in that upper room. And so on the night that he was betrayed, it was this night, my friends. He took the bread and he broke it. And he said, take this, all of you, and eat of it. This isn't just an ordinary wafer or, or a piece of flat bread. This represents me, my life. I've tried to show you disciples for three years what true love is like. And modern day Christians, I've tried to teach you for over 2,000 years what authentic love is like. 
And so take and eat, which represents my presence in your life. And may it give you strength so that you will love the person next to you. Let us eat. And after he passed the bread, he took the cup, the cup of blessing, and he blessed it. And he said, take and drink this, all of you. This represents the life that is within me, that is coursing through my veins. As often as you drink of it, you proclaim my presence and my power in your midst. And so, friends, as we drink of this, Let's ask God to give us the power to truly love like Jesus loved. Let's pray. Oh God, our Father, we thank you for this sacred evening that you've given us, especially this meal. And we ask, Lord, that the bread and the juice, Lord God, would strengthen us so that we would truly love as Jesus taught us to love. And we ask this in his matchless name. And all God's people said, amen. And as we continue to reflect on the unending love of Jesus this evening, let us sing what wondrous love is this.
thank you for joining us for worship tonight. But before I send you off with a blessing, I just want to remind you, Good Friday's tomorrow night, and we will have uh, our service at 7 o'clock, same, same channel. And uh, it's, it's uh, very special. The, uh, the, our virtual choir is singing again, so you won't want to miss the, the wonderful music. And also, this Sunday is, is Easter, and uh, at 9.30, we'll be having the Coffee with Jim Zoom call. But then at 10.30, we'll be gathering here in the parking lot for drive-in worship, the first one. So we're starting forward, meeting outside in the parking lot for a wonderful time of worship. It'll be so good to see each and every one of you with us. And so go with this blessing, my friends. May the love of God the Father, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit enable you to love as Jesus loves us. Amen. Thank you.